as I mentioned last week, DS6, this is the sixth and final subunit within data and statistics. And it's a really good one. I'm, I'm quite, I think it's a really cool sort of unit. Don't give me that face. Come on, why are you surprised that I said this? Um, this is one of the things which I feel it's ridiculous that two unit, you know, an extension one and extension two students, never find out about. Like, along with the normal distribution and Z scores, which they also never find out about, I kind of think this is crazy. This is so important to the way that we understand like the world around us that it's, um, I'm really glad you guys are here. So, the, the subunit title is sampling of populations. These are words you've heard before, sampling populations, and they obviously relate to each other in quite a close way. When we talk about a sample, can you help me remember, we've had a very, very cursory look at what samples are. When you say, I have a sample of a population, what does that mean? Any takers? Yeah, Laura. You get like a cross section of the population. Okay, a cross section is a really good phrase to use, actually. Cross section, uh, you know, cross section is a word we get from prisms, right? You've got a prism, and the whole idea is, in fact, I thought you were going to draw one. Get that one from prism. Well, in this classroom, we get that word from a prism. Uh, if you have a prism, and you take a cross section of that prism. In fact, I'm just going to put a few lines here. Need a new color. The whole point, <coughs> excuse me, of doing this on a prism is that every cross section is identical, right? So, for example, if we just chuck one. Now looks pretty good. Okay. Now. The whole point of the cross section is it represents, it's like one tiny little slice from which you can generalize what the rest of the prism is doing. Okay? And sampling does that exactly for a population, or at least it's intended to. Okay? But that leads us to a problem. Populations are not prisms. So when you take a sample, what kinds of problems arise? We looked at some of these before in our previous units. What problems can you get when you take a sample? Anyone want to suggest? That's okay, that's all right. Anyone want to jump off Emily's idea? Think about, for example, if I chose for our school as the population, if I said, okay, 12MG22, that's my sample, and I'm going to ask you guys a bunch of questions, or take measurements of your height, or whatever, what problems arise by treating you guys as my sample? Yeah, Akil. Okay. We're all in the same, I want to say the same categories, because we're all year 12, we're all in the same class. Yep. And so that's not very an accurate representation of the entire school. Okay. It's just... Class. All right. Akhil just said a phrase that's really important for us all to get down, and then Maddie, I'll come to your point, which is that you want your cross section to be an accurate representation. <coughs> Super important phrase of your population, right? And we can see there are immediately problems with, by using our class as an accurate representation, because well, on the face of it, we're all from the same grade. Right? So we've got 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 in the school. So immediately we run into problems as to whether <coughs> our class is an accurate representation of the population. Maddie, were you going to raise a different point or a similar one? This is something we looked at last year. We said, do you remember when we said year 223 and we had a look at the number of students here? We tried to extrapolate from that how many girls or boys there would be in the whole school. And our numbers were totally off because it just so happens within this class, uh, the distribution of boys and girls is not at all an accurate representation of the rest of the school. Now, this is a problem because this is always going to be an issue. We've picked out really obvious examples in terms of our class as a sample. But you can never get away from this. You can never get away from this. We try though, what were some of the techniques we used? We said there's not just samples, there are different kinds of samples. And I'll try and draw a, a picture for you to try and oh, remind is it you. Like, is it like stratified and random and, 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 and systematic? Oh, okay, very good. So the words are coming back. In fact, let's just jot those down to see if you remember them. Right? Um, systematic, random, <laughs> stratified. Okay. <laughs> no grease on me. Okay, now, these were, and I'm not going to go back over them. I just want to remind you of these ideas. These are different ways to try and solve this problem of a sample being, you know, not always the most accurate representation. What, it, what would it mean to have a systematic representation, sorry, a systematic sample of a population? What could we do? Yeah. Um, 
systematic is like um, I remember this very specific example. You're yep. standing, say, in a restaurant at, at the door, and maybe every every twentieth person that comes past, you ask them, I don't know, "How was your experience?" or something, and so you use that every twentieth person as a gauge for how everyone felt. Perfect. Yes. And this this example also came up in like factories, right? It's like we want to check if all the light bulbs we're producing are good quality or defective or whatever. So you check every twentieth light bulb or, or something like that, right? So we call this systematic because it is highly structured, it's highly predictable, and sometimes you can't do anything else but get people as they go through. It's not like you're going to get, how many people go to a Mac is in a day? Maybe a thousand people, at like a, a big one, and so you can't get all 1,000 people to just stay in a room for a while. It's like, hey, you came to this Mac is, you need to sit in this room all day until I can randomly pick out a bunch of you and make you my sample, okay? That was an example. Uh, what about the stratified example? This is what I drew this picture about. How might you take a population? What might you do? Let's actually think back to the year 12 issue. How can we overcome this? This is a specific example you looked at. How can we get a stratified sample of the school? Any suggestions? You could, um, like year 7 probably makes up like... 18% of the school population, yep. and if you got 100 people in the sample, you would put 18 U7s, and then you just like work out proportionally the percentage of each grade. Fantastic. So you can see, if you've got different layers in your population, and you can identify which proportions they are, then you simply take an according proportion of that little group, and then you put them all together, and it's a stratified sample because it has layers to it, which is what strata means, layers. Okay. All right. Now, just let's rewind one more uh, step just to ask a big question. Why are we doing samples in the first place? Why is this a necessity? Why is this um, something that we can't, we don't really have a choice but to do? Why do simpler. You, you say it's simpler? What do you mean by simpler? You can't survey everyone. You can't get, you can, but it's, it's hard. Yeah, it's so, it's cheaper. sampling is a way to get a small group of people because it's impractical to do this otherwise, right? So, this is the last thing we're going to jot down before we have a go at our actual task today. Um, sampling is a compromise. Um, what you're compromising between is the accuracy of your results. You're obviously not going to have results that are as accurate versus, as compared to if you checked everyone. But what you're comparing that to is resources like, say, time and money. Right? It's cheaper and it's faster to do this. Not to mention, uh, what's the alternative? When something isn't a sample, when you check absolutely everyone, it's called a census. census. Now we know we can do this. We know it's expensive, so that's why we don't do it very frequently. But not only that, once you get census data, like, okay, Australia is how many million people? 20, 24, 25 million people, okay? How long does it think it takes, you know, the government to get all that data and put it into a usable form? Answer? A long time. Imagine if you're like 300 million like the US or billions like India or China. Once you get all of the information, right, if you don't have a sample here, everyone, it just takes forever. So maybe that information won't be useful to you by the time you actually get it. Okay? So therefore, sampling is a really big deal.